be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> All right, Max, here we are back again at the rabbit trail. <laughs> uh, pretty great, pretty great, my friend. Yes, All right, so listen, definitely. in this block, I got some stuff. I, I got a vent, you know, <laughs> I, I tr- you know, I try to stay off social media, but I can't, I'm drawn to it. And then I try not to say anything, but then I have to say something. You saw my post on Facebook yesterday, probably, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Gray hair is the light, gray is the lightest form of brown. <laughs> I just kind of go, what? <laughs> so gray I, is different than white and salt yeah. and pepper is different than... So I, we have a couple of things we want to share with everybody today. Again, this is, um, we've got some information that people sent us that we want to kind of address that. And then um, we've got some altered voice clips from <laughs> to, some of these. Protect the innocent. Some of these experts on social media and the classes that they do. Now, a lot of this is going to be starting to be covered in our new show, which is coming up really soon called Say What? And uh, say what will be specifically about what people are saying, you know, crazy stuff that people have heard. We're inviting anybody who is one of our viewers, you know, if, if you've heard crazy stuff on social media or in classes, take a 30 second or one minute selfie video of yourself and send it in to us. You can send it to info at gurunation.net. And then we will look at these and we will, we will air it. If you if, if with your permission, of course, we will air it. And uh, so you'll be on the show with us. So you'll be able to, to voice your question. We'll be able to address it. And uh, so make you feel a little bit more involved in what we're doing. Now, if, if you don't want to do a selfie video, you can do strictly audio, send us an audio. We're good with that. Or you can simply write a message and say, here's the crazy stuff I've heard. Is this true or not true? And we'll do our best to answer it for you. But I think it's really come down to the time because there's so many experts on social media today, self-proclaimed experts, that, that we have to really kind of, you know, root out some of this stuff that's not exactly accurate. Now, I'm not saying it's always completely wrong. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's like, wow, what have they been drinking? But uh, most often it is... A misunderstanding of the information, which means that sometimes people aren't grounded. And so they voice what they're sharing with you as an opinion rather than actually what is happening. So that'll be on Say What. We are looking for that to start airing probably by the 10th of the month, which is not far away. Um, We're getting that first program together. So we're very excited about that. Max, of course, is going to be hosting that show with me. We're going to have some fun. Some real fun. (laughs) Yes, sir. All right. So, look, I want to share with you something that um, someone sent me. And it was was posted on social media. And they were talking about – okay, so I'm just going to tell you what I think they were talking about. They were talking about pigment in the hair. So that's natural pigment in the hair. So those of you who watched us, who've been to our classes, you know that what we teach is there are two types of melanin or pigment in the hair. One is called eumelanin or what we call diffuse pigment, easy to lighten out of the hair. The other is called pheomelanin or granulated pigment, a bit more difficult to lighten out of the hair. So so we've already, we've taught that information, but, but here's something that I, I think it's just people are just, they make up numbers because it's what they think is actually happening. Because I've never seen these numbers <laughs> in 45 years. I've never seen these numbers. So that doesn't mean I, that they're not accurate, but that's nothing that I've ever studied. So here's the, here's the statement. Okay. It says, the darker the color, the more pigment it contains. Blue dominates, making the hair darker or deeper and cooler in the darker shades. The mid levels have more red and a bit, they're a bit richer. The lighter levels have very little pigment mass 
and they are ideal for toning with 10 volume. Now, below this, they make a list of each level. Like a level two has nine times the pigment mass. A level three has eight times the pigment mass. A level four has seven times the pigment mass and so on and so forth, all the way to level 10 where it has one times the pigment mass. So first of all, I have no idea what pigment mass is. Second of all, the depth of hair color is not physical. I Meaning it's not based upon how much pigment is in your hair. It's based upon what pigment is the primary pigment in your hair. For example, if I have primarily eumelanin in my hair and very little or minimal pheomelanin, my hair will be darker. Doesn't matter how much I have, it will be darker because remember, it's a visual measurement. It's light absorption versus light reflection. So the mass is not reduced as the hair gets lighter. It still has pigment, which is protein, which is part of the structure of the hair. It doesn't have less color. It just has a different color in it. Because according to this, the lighter levels have less, less pigment mass. Therefore, they're easy to color. They're not. What if they have a lot of pheomelanin? Pheomelanin is very strong reddish gold pigment. So if I lighten a level nine, you guys have heard me say this before. If I lighten a hair to a level nine, and it's a level nine, the color of egg of scrambled eggs versus level nine, the color of lemons, the variation is going to be different. My level nine toner is not going to even affect that strong level nine that has still some pheomelanin in it. In fact, you can look at this slide and you can see the difference between lightening a head of hair using that has a lot of eumelanin versus hair that has a lot of pheomelanin in it. There's a difference in the visual result. So I don't know why they, they share this. I think they're, it's their way of articulating information to help people understand that darker hair has more pigment, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't mean that it has more pigment. It just might mean it has more eumelanin than it has pheomelanin. In fact, there's no accurate way to measure it because that's all up to genetics and mother nature. I mean, we have no control over that. We can't accurate, this is a calibrated number. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How can you do that? It's the hair. It's the human hair. And every hair on the head, no matter if you have virgin hair, every hair on your head is not the same color. I'm going to tell you that right now. It is not. Because there's an MC1R gene that sets in the, the surface of a melanocyte, which holds melanin. Okay, so this MC1R gene, based upon how your body produces it, will determine what color that hair strand will be. So not all hair strands are the same color. So for me, why would you use this kind of a guide when you're, and why would you tell people there's more pigment in darker hair than there is in lighter hair? There's not more pigment necessarily in darker hair. There's just more eumelanin than there is pheomelanin, which is really not a bad idea. It's pretty good, actually. If I get dark hair that has a high, high amount of eumelanin, usually it's going to lighten pretty easily. But what if I get dark hair that has a lot of eumelanin, but it has a little pheomelanin in it as well? It doesn't have to have a lot of that. It just has a little bit. It's still going to get stuck in those warm stages, in those warm levels. So keep that in mind. And it's like in our other segment, like Max was saying, all fives are not the same. All ones are not the same. All twos are not the same. Max, do you want to add anything to that? I mean, man. <laughs> I mean, I think the, the, 
Will you just reread the very first sentence from that post? Yes. The darker the color, more pigment is contained. That's it. The darker the color, comma, more pigment is contained, period. Blue dominates, making the hair darker, deeper, and cooler. The mid-levels have more red dominating, making the color more reflective and a bit richer, comma. The lighter levels have very little pigment mass, ideal for toning with 10 volume. So the mid-range could not have any red in it at all if they had a lot of UML in it. Yeah. There's nothing. Uh, so I was I'm, trying to find a shred of truth in there, but I can't, I can't find anything. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. And here's the reason that, that we share this with you. The person that's delivering this information has a huge following. A lot of people who believe what this person says. So What's that tell me? That means there are a lot of people out there who think that darker hair has more pigment than lighter hair. And they think <laughs> that there's a pigment mass that they're dealing with, natural. Now, right. when we talk about building a hair color, not human hair color, but artificial hair color. Chemicals. Chemicals. All right, so, so even with chemicals, when I'm adding dye intermediates into a formula based upon the dye intermediates that I'm using will determine how light or how dark that hair color will be. Yeah. See, we're using, we're using physical expectations and we're basing those on a visual form of measurement. <laughs> Can you see why people are confused? You know, that's why they go lighter, darker, medium. Well, it's not vertical. <laughs> it's like, you know, you have to understand that it's all visual. It's all visual. And it's all what you see, you know, because that's a part of physics that takes part of it as well. All right. So we got that one taken care of. Hopefully, hopefully you found that helpful. <laughs> Max, you ready to try the next one? This is the video. This is a clip. All righty. Lay it on me. All Let's right. See. Here we go. All right. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go sound only so that we keep. Uh, and uh, Okay, Max, you should be able to hear this. Let me know. All right. Did, did, my, did my share work? It says you're sharing computer sound. I don't hear anything yet, though. Okay. Sharing computer sound. Share. Can you see us? I can see us. Did I yeah. move? Did I, am I moving us? Nope. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. Here we go. Tell me if you can hear this, Max. I did was I mixed equal parts of 6T, this is all Redken shades, 6T, 7P, 8N, 8V, and I left that in the mid shafts longer and then ran it through the bottoms. So I would have longer time to cancel out those pigments where it was a little bit deeper and then more just like a refresher towards the bottom. So you'll be able to um, that will actually help her with longevity because I was able to actually utilize what underlying pigments were remaining and then be able to cancel them out. And I didn't want her to go a little bit deeper, so I used a 13 volume when I glossed her second. When I pre-toned, I did use a 5 volume because I wanted as much depth as possible. And when you are glossing and you want to impart a lot of tone and you don't want to impart a lot of depth, upping your developer is actually really going to help with that. Uh, because what it did was it allowed for me to keep as much brightness as possible, but the intensity of the tone was spot on. So, I also... All right, so let's talk about this 
last statement. So I think it sounded very artistic. I think it sounded very artistic, don't you, Max? Mm. <laughs> sure. I don't okay. know. I'm having a panic attack right now. Okay. So, but... so, look, this person is using Shades EQ. And since that's one of my surrogate children, um, I want to share with you a mistake that a lot of colorists make when we formulate. Sometimes we formulate like we cook. We just keep adding ingredients, adding ingredients, and adding ingredients. Now this formula, that this it, very impressive influencer on Instagram shared was a combination of one, two, three, four different families of color. Okay. So, <clears throat> and if you heard them, they said what they wanted to do was balance out what was happening in the mid shaft of the hair. And then they wanted to refresh it on the ends and they wanted to have more tone and less depth. And maintain, then, maintain brightness. And maintain brightness. And then before that, they pre-toned, and they pre-toned with 6N and 6T in Shades EQ. So 6T is a gray with blue, and 6N in Shades EQ is brown with blue-violet. So they toned pre-toned with that, which I, I don't get pre-toning. Pre-toning is toning. <laughs> it's just, it's, there's no... I don't know where that came from. So anyway, I broke down what they were doing. Okay. So, so obviously that mid section of the hair must have been, must have been fire red or orange. It's what it had to be because if you add all the, take a look at all the backgrounds and the tone, remember background and tone and reflect are always part of a blended color. Shades EQ is a blended color, okay? So, so when you take a look at that, you have to understand that background is always gonna be part of that formula. So what that person actually came up with with the formula was it was brown plus gray plus gray plus gray. <laughs> what, did they say bright? Brown plus gray plus gray plus gray plus blue violet, blue violet, and blue violet. I'm sorry, <clears throat> there is no brightness in that formula. None. Now, in order to create that, or to create brightness, they said they went to using 13 volume. Now, I don't know where this came from, where people are using higher volumes with Shades EQ. Uh, again, it's one of those moments where people wanna be creative, it's not about what will make it most successful. It's like, hey, look at me, look what I can do. Because when you up the volume of developer, you, you do not increase the tone. Okay, when you up the volume of developer, you decrease everything. Because remember, peroxide, not only does it deliver dye intermediates to the hair, it destroys dye intermediates in the bowl. Now I mean, on top, the, go ahead. The, the, the thing that you should, that you can say that is true is when you increase the developer, the only thing that you're really increasing is the amount of chemical activity that's happening. That's it. In the interaction of these chemicals. That's right. 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 So whether it's in the bowl or on the head. So. Exactly. All that being said, and maybe you can answer this because I don't actually know. Do you think by mixing the second batch of color with the higher developer and then putting it on the pre-tone of the level six, because you do have more chemical activity going on, is that actually lightening the first application? 
or does that or would that possibility even exist it's possible uh but the problem is is that you're working with shade dq which is going to process <coughs> at a ph just slightly over seven right so you don't have enough alkalinity in that color to allow the developer to release the amount of oxygen required to do that. Okay. Okay. So on top of that, when we said fire orange, so I'm assuming that it was, had to be a level seven brassiness or whatever they called it. The color of tang. <laughs> the color of it's like, tang. It's a tang level seven. And, not a... and with all of that that they did, where they mixed a six and a seven and two eights, they still came up with a level seven based upon the understanding of pigment weight. Sure. So <clears throat> why put all of that in your bowl unless you're frightened and you want to, <laughs> it's like my grandpa said, you could shoot a rabbit with a cannon, but there's not much rabbit left. Right. So if you're really frightened of what you're dealing with and you want to try to kill it, you want to bring all the army you've got. And so they thought, <coughs> I'll unload every cool color I can think of into that bowl to make that result. Because you could have probably done it with a 7P, you know, something around a 7, and you would sure. have been fine. You would have been fine. I, I was just thinking, like, what would a, <clears throat> what would a more simpler approach be? Right. You know, it's like. Well, see, I've, here's what I find. All of this, when you add all these colors together, they are, are an afterthought. So right. you initially go in with what you wanted to use. Okay, so obviously this person pre-toned it with a level six. Obviously, the level six didn't get rid of all the brassiness. Because now they come back in with a seven and an eight and all this other stuff. So... <clears throat> what they did is they went with their initial formula and then they started saying, well, what if I add this? And what if I add that? And what if I add this? And as a result of that, that's how they come up with a bowl of mud. Right. Okay. Keep your formulas simple. First of all, it's easier to remember your formula. <laughs> right. You know? I mean, <clears throat> and she was probably dealing with orange, right? Which is, you know. Oh, I would think so with this kind a of. A yellow a and a red. Yeah. So you probably could have gone in with, you know, something with a gray background with blue. Right. Or or even a, you know, brown to tan background with blue cuz blue and orange. Yeah, if you if you if you map that out, <clears throat> you could do it a lot simpler and the color would look more pure. I I saw a picture, I saw a picture of the finished result and it was flat. Flat, flat, flat. Well, okay. how can it not? It, it can't not be with all of that gray yeah. background. Yeah, it can't not be. And cool tones. I mean, cool right. tones are going to look flatter. So Exactly. So um, stop complicating your formulations and understand that even though the formula may sound creative, after the first two colors you mix, everything else doesn't matter any longer. It doesn't, you know, you're just, it's all emotion. <clears throat> all right. So you're ready to go to our next piece, Max? Sure. Okay. I'm going to have to go down here and find it. So give me a second. Think about it like one. If you wanted to, uh, I think it just helps tremendously keeping all that brightness in there. And I think it's really important that you volume intensify the why does 13 volume uh, okay, helps tremendously keeping all that brightness all right here there. we go and <clears throat> i think it's really important that you know what oh here's a good question why does 13 volume uh let's see why does 13 volume intensify the tone so let's break it down a little bit so if you have a six okay so now she's going to explain why 13 volume intensifies the tone here we go volume or a five volume it is does not have any kind of um brightening or intensity power it's just meant to deposit tone okay so 
what this person is saying is that five volume or six volume <clears throat> only is designed to deposit color. It's peroxide. It doesn't have a specified job. It is, it, it's a combination of what you mix it with. Okay, so it's not deposit only because I can take five volume, I can mix it with bleach. Guess what? It won't be deposit only, it will be lift. And if you think about it, like when you use um, like a 10 volume versus a 20 volume on natural, it's opening up the cuticle. It's, well, that's because it has ammonia in it, but it's, it's allowing more pigment to come through because of the developer. So it's allowing more pigment to come through. Can anybody please explain to me what the heck that means? So the developer is allowing for a little bit more intensity of tone and not so much depth. So when you lift up to 13 volume or like a 15 volume, you're actually allowing for less depth and more tone deposit. So I hope that helps. But also... And you can't separate depth and tone. They're side by side. <coughs> so if I up the volume of developer, I decrease depth and tone both. Can you see how confused someone can be? And these people are out there teaching. First of all, Shade DQ was designed to be used with a six volume developer. Not nine, but six volume. Because it processes at a pH slightly above neutral. I know, I know you call it acid. Listen to me, I'm gonna tell you. If a color has oxidative dyes and you mix it with a developer, it's not acid, it's alkaline. So if it processes slightly above seven, it's an alkaline color. That doesn't make it bad. That just means it was designed to do that. That's why we used a very low volume of developer because we wanted something that would gently swell the cuticle layers and allow the developer to deposit dye intermediates deep in the cuticle layers without creating tonal shift. But guess what? Tonal shift was still created on certain hair textures, even fine hair textures like my hair, you could create some tonal shift. It wouldn't be noticeable at the initial application. It would be noticeable when I came back for a retouch. So when someone says to you, it's impossible for a demi-permanent color to create tonal shift, that's not true because on certain textures of hair, it will. And if you increase the volume of developer or processing solution that you use, I guarantee you, you will create tonal shift. You will create a hard line of demarcation. You see, that's why we made it the way we did is because even as it faded, there was no hard line of demarcation left. It looked more natural. We didn't say there wasn't a line of demarcation. We said there wasn't an obvious line of demarcation. Those of you that are old enough to remember when we launched this in 1986, remember what we said. Very, very important. Max, you wanna share some things on this? I mean, a couple of things. Um, <coughs> number one, we were always taught it wasn't a line of demarcation, it was a shadow. Yes. You know, that was, <laughs> there was that. But now, you know, on the market today, too, there are actually alkaline demis that are out there that will, that have been designed purposefully to shift the base, to create mm -hmm. tonal shift, you know, like about anywhere between half a level to a level. Right. Right. You know, the, so the, it's the, like the purpose for it. Yeah. Yeah. A purpose, you know, which, which is more like <clears throat> no lift color. I like to call it low lift color. There you go. You know, yeah, that's like a good a better, line. better descriptor, you know? Absolutely. 
All right, let's do the last part of this, and then we are we are at the end. All right, we're sharing. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Here's the last part. We talked about the pH levels of developer and how not to be afraid because the um, the power of your color is actually in the tube, not in the developer. All right, so listen. I'm going to ask a huge favor of all of you. Stop saying that. The power of the lift is not in the tube. The power of the lift is in the developer. The tube simply creates the environment, but the developer is what lightens the hair. Stop saying that because people misunderstand and they start to diminish, diminish what developer can do if you raise the developer in a color color formulation. Max, you want to share something on that? I'm sorry, I, mean, I had to jump in. No, you were <laughs> you were very passionate about that, <coughs> and you know I think you you summed it up beautifully. It is, it's the relationship between the alkalizer and the developer right. that causes the liberation of oxygen which is what actually creates the lightning action. Yeah, I love um, that. You're absolutely right. So it's like a, it's a group effort. Yes. You've got to have both. Yes. And you can't just apply one or the other to the hair and expect something to happen. That's right. So. All right, so let's go to the, the final piece here. Here we go. The developer is just kind of like the accelerant to get you there. Their pHs are all the same. They're very, very low between 2.5 and 4.5. So don't be afraid of your developer. It's not going to open up your cuticle. Ammonia and all those other little additives and color is what opens up the cuticle. So don't be afraid. All right. So there is the thing. Don't be afraid of peroxide. Raise your volume on your demi permanent color, and then <clears throat> then ask yourself why you didn't get the deposit you were looking for. That's all I can say. But again, it comes down to visually what you consider being the benchmark, right? Yeah. Are we in stop sharing now, right, Max? Where it stop share? There you go. Okay. All right. So that's been interesting today. A lot of stuff out there that. Um, people are saying that really is not accurate. It's really not accurate. And um, we just wanted to give you a couple of samples today that uh, it's about if you're, if you're a hairdresser or a colorist and you're watching this, you know, whenever you hear information that's not act that you doesn't make sense to you, question it. If you're an educator and you're watching this, please make sure that you're, delivering the proper information and if you don't know how to explain it have someone help you so that we have people that are out you know they're getting the information i think that's one of those struggles most new people in this business have is that they have to depend upon the people that are around them to give them what they think is accurate information and then they go out and they're exposed to other people which give them a different spin on it yeah. And then they go to different people and gives them a different spin. And so that's why you have so many variations of opinions about what's happening in hair color today. And we want you to be successful. We want all of you to be successful. We don't want you to have to have to go through what, especially what I did, <coughs> because we didn't have education available to us when I, when I was in beauty school. We had to find somebody who had a salon in the, lo in the local town and we'd go to their salon on Wednesday night and we'd learn what they know and then they'd come to our salon and learn what we know. Uh, but today you have information available to you everywhere. But, you know, sort it out. Make sure it's information that makes sense to you. Um, that's going to be real important. So uh, anything that we missed today, Max? I mean... I think we, I think we covered a lot, actually. I think we did. I think we covered a lot of information. Hopefully, you found it beneficial. Hopefully, you got some nuggets out of this, and you're uh, you're able to, um, you know, use those to help you be more productive in the salon. 
If you are watching us on YouTube, I want to thank you so much. And uh, we invite you to subscribe right here on the site. You can do it right below our screen. Uh, thank you so much. Our, our, our viewership has grown and we're grateful to you for that. So obviously you like what you're hearing. And if there's things that we can do to make it more beneficial for you, please send us a note. You can send a, a note to info at gurunation.net. And <clears throat> Max and I will make sure we get to see that information and uh, try to tailor this program for something that you know, makes it more beneficial for you. Um, our goal here is to help you become more successful. That's our total purpose, to help you discover the genius in each and every one of you. Now, you can reach Max and I, and you can follow us, and we'd love to have you follow us on Instagram. Max is at Max M Hair. Okay, that would be his uh, his handle on Instagram, and my handle is at Real Captain Color. Remember, on Instagram, a lot of the rabbit trails are posted in our IGTV spot, uh, so we we have those that are posted there as well. Um, plus, we're going to start doing a few live broadcasts on Instagram as well, just to. You know, it's always good to have live interaction rather than just being pre-recorded all the time. And um, then you can follow us on Facebook. We have our, our Guru Nation Facebook page. We invite you to follow us there as well. And come visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net. On our website, we have an educational page shows all the upcoming classes that we have coming up in our virtual classroom, which is this platform right here. We also have pre-recorded webinars that you can purchase and download. And most of them are 45 minutes to an hour, gives you some key points and different subject matter and uh, some nuggets that will so, help you as you move along in your color career. We invite you to visit our gallery, which has some videos from classes that we've done. Um, when we were actually able to do physical classes in the field. And then it gives you an insight into what a Guru Nation event would look like in uh, your city or your town. We are hoping that we get to start doing that again. Um, you know, it looks like the world is kind of changing a little bit. So it's possible at the latter part of the year, we'll be able to do some of those things. But uh, we hope you've enjoyed it today. And um, <clears throat> Max, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so and, much for uh, having me. Yeah, it's been great, man. I love doing these programs with you. And wait, wait, wait. Oh my God, Max, I hear our ride. It's here now. <laughs> so you need to pack your bag, buddy, and meet, me, right. in the, meet me in the clearing. Uh, listen, everybody, uh, we wish you a great weekend. And uh, whoever you're rooting for at Super Bowl, we hope your team wins. How's that? <laughs> you guys have a great Sunday. We'll see you again soon. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. And don't forget to watch for Say What. It will be here soon. Until then, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out of here. Max, thank you, my friend. See you all. See you later, Dennis. Have a thank great you. day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.